Hello and how are you all doing? Welcome to Planet 40k. Doing another review from the Necron Force. This one's going to be another Forge World model. It's going to be the Sentry Pylon coming from the Imperial Armor Compendium book. So we're going to dive straight into this data sheet to begin the review. Starting off with the fact that the battlefield role is a fortification. So we'll require a fortification network which we'll go over later in the video. As for the actual cost of the unit it's going to be 6 power level or 100 points. With any potential upgrades again we'll go over later in the video so you can take units between one and three of these pylons as for the actual stat line now as it is a fortification it's got no movement and it's got no weapon skill but the blizzard skill is a three plus strength four toughness seven wounds eight no attacks leadership ten and three plus save so of course no attacks as well it's not going to be fighting back in combat however it does have some ranged abilities hence why it's got a blizzard skill value so each model is equipped with a gorse exterminator and a teleportation matrix so let's get on with those starting with the gorse exterminator it's a 48 inch range weapon heavy 2 strength 8 minus 3 ap and the damage is d6 and if you're going against aircraft it's going to add 2 to the attacks hit rolls which will basically mean you're always going to be hitting on a 2 plus now aircrafts are not that common in the game at present maybe they'll come into it later in the edition but as for now it's not the best weapon but regardless you're still getting two shots at strength 8 with d6 damage for 100 points there now with the teleportation matrix isn't actually a ranged weapon it's not a melee weapon of course either it effectively gives the unit the dimension translocation ability which is pretty much deep strike so in turns two onwards you can come in anywhere on the battlefield more than nine inches away from enemy models now as for the actual war gear options you can swap out the gorse exterminator for one of the following so it could either be a focus death ray or a heat cannon so the focus death ray is a 36 inch range heavy one strength 12 minus 4 op with the damage being d3 plus 3 i know what you're all thinking there's finally a bit of d3 plus 3 damage in the necron force because most of our stuff is pretty much d6 but it is only unfortunately one shot as opposed to d6 shots now the heat cannon which will cost you 25 points is also a 36 inch range weapon this time it is heavy D6 with strength 8, minus 4 AP and the damage is D6. But if you're firing within half range, then the damage will be D6 plus 2. So that half range will of course be 18 inch range to get that extra damage. So on average you should be looking at 4 or even 5 damage per shot that gets through there. So instantly I'm thinking that heat cannon is probably better served if you're taking a sentry pylon. But of course if you're taking 3 sentry pylons, that's 75 points in total if you put in 3 heat cannons. On the entire unit however you've got to remember you've got the deep strike ability so you can pop in from turn two onwards be 18 inches away to get the extra plus two damage on the weapon now as for the actual abilities of course it's got living metal like most necron units do have so in the command phase it regains a lost wound at the start of the turn it's also got the command protocol so it's got to be within six inches of a character and depending on what battle round and the directive you've chosen for that command protocol it's going to get buffs some of them are good some of them not so good i personally don't look at them too deeply you've then got the explode ability because it's a vehicle so once destroyed on a roll of a six any units within six inches will suffer d3 mortal wound so quite a standard ability there then finally it's got the artillery battery so when you first set up the unit on the battlefield it doesn't have to be set up in unit coherency instead each unit must be set up within six inches of one other model from the unit then from that point on each model in the unit is treated as its own separate unit so this is important for a few reasons so firstly you can just line them up with six inch gaps between all three of them plus the actual model itself you're going to be covering a lot of the board there with the pylons but secondly if you're taking three of them and they're now treated as complete separate units it's going to make a little bit of difference when it comes down to secondary objectives so just be aware of that one you don't want to be giving up points for nothing there then finally those keywords of note it does have the dynasty keyword although it will not benefit from the dynasty buffs it is of course a vehicle as well which will relate to a stratagem which we'll go over but first we'll go over what a fortification network actually does and how it interacts with this unit a fortification network will cost you one command point however if it's the same faction as the warlord detachment which it should be then you'll get that command point back so it is effectively a free detachment so units within a fortification network never gain the detachment abilities so if you're using the nephrit dynasty for example you can't be gaining those mephrit dynasty abilities and furthermore it can't actually hold any objectives again because it's a fortification there's also something else in terms of actually deploying this unit fortifications cannot be set up within three inches of other terrain features except for hills so if you've got any ruins for example you can't be placing it within three inches of a ruin 
So this makes deployment not straightforward, especially when you've got quite heavy terrain on the battlefield. So there are a few stratagems that are available to this type of unit. So the first one is disintegration capacitors for one command point used on your gorse weapons, which will be your gorse exterminator weapon with two shots. And basically if you roll a six to hit, it's going to automatically wound. Now I would never use this on a sentry pylon because it's only got two shots. The chances of rolling a six to hit is very unlikely. You don't want to be using the CP for that, but I've got to tell you it because it does link to this unit. Then the second stratagem available is the Curse of the Pharaon stratagem, which is one command point used on a Necron vehicle. When it's destroyed, you don't have to roll to see if it explodes. It automatically explodes, which is going to be causing D3 wounds to anyone within six inches. So if you are surrounded by a lot of enemy units, you definitely pop this one off for one command point to be pushing out a lot of mortal wounds on enemy units there. In terms of synergy with units within the Necron Codex, there's not much synergy going on here. I'll briefly mention a few of them that would work. The Technomancer with a Canoptic Cloak will be able to heal this thing D3 lost wounds each turn. And the same thing applies to a Canoptic Spider using a Fabrication Claw Array. Used on a Dynasty Vehicle model, you can regain D3 lost wounds at the start of each turn. If you wanted to put an Inbun save onto this Sentry Pylon, you can get a Chronomancer with a Chronometer and Ability. Now you are kind of wasting it if I'm honest because it doesn't have any charge moves because it can't move, but it will get a 5 plus Invulnerable save if you wanted to give him the Inbun save. Then finally, if you're using a Triarch Stalker, using a targeting relay, you get the Stalker to make a hit on a unit that you want to target with a Sentry Pylon, then that Pylon is going to be re-rolling all hit rolls of a 1. So that's all the main synergy that is going to relate to the Sentry Pylon. Let's get on with the summary, starting with the good. The fact that it can deep strike gives you a bit of flexibility within your deployment of course. And it can have units of up to three of them and they've got that six inch coherency rather than the standard coherency rules. So therefore you can line them up covering quite a lot of the board which is going to really make it difficult for your opponent to get units out of cover behind obscuring terrain because you're going to really map out most of the board there. It's then got the option of a strength 12 weapon with D3 plus 3 damage, which is quite rare for the Necron Force to have a strength 12. There are some strength 12 weapons within the Force, not many, and also that damage being D3 plus 3, there's not many that have that as opposed to the D6. Then finally, when you are using that Deep Strike ability and you're taking the Heat Cannon, which is a 36 inch cannon, you want to be firing within 18 inch range to get that D6 plus 2 damage. So you can do that fairly easily when you're deep striking in because you can come up to 9 inches away from any models. You don't need to go all the way up to 9 inches, take as much as you can, 18 inches will do you just fine. And if you roll well for the amount of shots you get with D6, you could quite easily be removing a fairly large model from your opponent's army there, which should easily make its points back. However, of course, if you're rolling a 1 for the amount of hits and then you miss, then it's going to probably be caught out. So just bear in mind that could actually happen. As for the bad, it's immobile, of course. There's no movement. Once it's come down, it's landed or it's been deployed, that's where it's going to be staying. It can't hold any objectives. So even if you plonk it on an objective, it's not doing anything. Now you could park it on an objective just to kind of block out your opponents from actually gaining that objective because they've got to stay an inch away from all enemy models. It can't be holding any objectives that are going to relate to your primaries and your secondaries for victory points. For 100 points to 125 points per model, there's just better options within the Necron Codex itself and the Forge World models as well. If you're looking for those high strength, high damage weapons, you've got plenty of heavy support options that can do more than just stay stationary. They're not going to be immobile, they're going to be scoring points. So that there are better options found elsewhere. Now it's got those deployment issues, not being able to deploy three inches within terrain features that could become a bit of a hindrance, especially on a very cluttered board. So just bear that one in mind again. It of course is not going to get any dynasty buffs from your dynasties whether you're taking one of the six generic dynasties or the ancient custom dynasties it's not going to benefit whatsoever from those rules and abilities which kind of sucks because some of them are pretty good for example this could have really benefited from the Sarakin dynasty being able to re-roll one of those wound rolls could have been pretty valuable then finally the deep strike ability is only going to be really effective when you're taking the heat cannon if you're foregoing turn one of shooting while you're carrying a gorse exterminator with 48 inch range there's kind of no point in deep striking really you may as well just deploy on the battlefield be shooting in the first battle round and the same thing applies to that focus death ray you can find the target within 36 inch range for that strength 12 shot so that's the summary before we get onto the rating we're going to be doing our shout out of the day which is going to Yai Guy Guitar for his comment relating to the Canoptic Tomb Sentinel when he made this comment it always does make me smile i'm presuming he's mocking my accent i'm not sure it does make me smile when i'm reading that kind of comment so shout out goes to you as for the planet 40k star rating today for the sentry pylon this might be a little bit generous but i'm going to be going with a 2.5 star rating now the reason why is purely because of that deep strike combination with a heat cannon. You can come in and pretty much delete a vehicle unit or delete a monster unit, then it's probably going to get fried. But it's then going to soak up a lot of firepower from your opponent's list there. So I think it's just about average for me at best. 
It was between a 2 and a 2.5, so I've just been a bit generous here. 2.5 star for today. That's the review and the rating for the Sentry Pylon, guys. Do you agree with the rating? Let me know below in the comments. Don't forget, the best comment will be shouted out in our next Necron video. So be sure to watch that to see if you get shouted out in that video. Like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.